Okay, I have absolutely no notes or anything prepared for this, but this is realistically just going to be a video about the WWE Hall of Fame and how the Bella Twins, oh, I don't know, the, the whole Hall of Fame system for World Wrestling Entertainment, it's just so flawed because this it's just a bogus Hall of Fame. Now, WWE, it's predetermined, okay? When wrestlers get titles, that's because... You know, politics and management line up, they get given the opportunity and they get the championship on their resume. Okay, pro wrestling resumes, by and large, granted it comes from a lot of hard work and getting yourself to that point in most cases, but a lot of it is politics. That's what pro wrestling is, it's always been politics. From the days of Hulk Hogan being a politician in the 80s and the 90s to Triple H and all that kind of stuff in the early 2000s that pissed everyone off, and then you had the stuff with Cena, who... Cena wasn't that much of a politician, but everyone just knows him of that because of the SummerSlam 2010 thing of the Nexus. And then just all the stuff with pro wrestling politics. Politics is everywhere in pro wrestling, and that rubs off on the Hall of Fame so much. The Hall of Fame, it, it's World Wrestling Entertainment, okay? In World Wrestling Entertainment and pro wrestling in general, the outcomes are pre, you know, are, they're decided in advance, okay? They're thought about, they're discussed. They're in a, you know, like a, a corporate meeting, and they discuss what the best avenue and route to go is. And that's the same thing, the exact same thing with the Hall of Fame. Now, this Hall of Fame over the years, near enough, every big name WWE person has, is in it. Outside of The Rock, Vince McMahon, who else even? I mean, Triple H, but anyone who's kind of like a, like a current wrestler or someone re really heavily involved isn't in it. So now, like... You pretty much got everyone in it outside of Owen Hart, obviously. That I'll more on that later. So now it's really becoming like they're kind of forcing people into the Hall of Fame. Now the Bella Twins going into the Hall of Fame, that that coincides with that point perfectly. Brie Bella, Nikki Bella, this this isn't n like new news. This isn't something that's hot off the press and the elitist is breaking it to you. This is something which we've known about this story for what a week, two weeks now. That they're probably they're going to be going in the Hall of Fame for 2020, it's a decision which, pretty controversial, plenty of people say that they just shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame at all, they did nothing for the women's division, they're only there because they slept with, in Nikki's case, Cena, in Bree's case, Daniel Bryan, and because their their mother is married to John Laurinaitis, so, I mean, that, that all stuff, you know, helps politically, so many people say that they don't deserve it for that, then there's the avenue which I can see both sides of this argument. I'm not super one way or the other with the Bella Twins. There's the avenue of, look, they brought in all that you know attention and publicity to the WWE in a mainstream perspective on the E Network through Total Divas, which I don't know how that's had nine seasons. I've watched three episodes and it makes me want to pour bleach into my eyeballs. So whether that's through Total Divas or this you know Total Bellas show, which if you're if you're someone who watches Total Bellas or Total Divas, I don't even know. I just don't. It, that kind of thing doesn't click with me. It, it's more, this shouldn't sound too sexist, but it's more, by and large, based for a female demographic and a female audience. As a, a male, by and large, men don't really care for the, you know, that, that really super fake reality TV, you know, real housewives of wherever, that kind of show, is not the kind of thing I like to watch. Granted, it gets plenty of viewers, that kind of thing clicks with demographics, so you can't blame them for that. The Bella Twins, they've been, you know, pioneers in that regard as far as getting WWE into that demographic. So, in that regard, they deserve the Hall of Fame, which, when you look at it that way, they've done more than plenty of people who are in the Hall of Fame. Literally, Bobo Brazil's in the Hall of Fame, I think, pretty sure, I don't know. Coco Beware is in the Hall of Fame, okay? In reality, when you look at who's done more for the business, the Bella Twins have done more than Coco Beware. Now, granted, Coco Beware probably shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame, but that's a whole other other discussion. The Bella Twins themselves, I can see why they're going in the Hall of Fame. Do I love that they're going into the Hall of Fame? Does the elitist think that the Bella Twins going in the Hall of Fame is just a great call that, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with it? No, okay. I don't love that the Bella Twins going into the Hall of Fame. It doesn't sound right because... From a WWE Raw and SmackDown and pay-per-view like booking perspective, they did nothing for like a decade. Literally, my memories of them on the main roster, I don't even remember when they came into the company. I think in 2010, from memory. Because I remember I was watching, 
I forget what I was watching, but I was watching, I think it was like an eight-man tag match. It must have been 2012, I think. It was like an eight-man, oh, eight-woman tag match. And the Bellatones were on a team, and Jerry Lawler was sounding like an utter creep on commentary. You know, Lawler being Lawler. So Lawler was freaking out about the Bellatones. This is back when they looked the exact same in 2011 and 12. Like when they, you couldn't tell them apart because Nikki hadn't had her surgeries yet. So, you know, they, they, you couldn't tell them apart. They were meaningless. They were just kind of there. They were meaningless backstage segments of the great Carl Lee. That's all they were doing. And then you hit 2013, Total Divas takes off. These two become essentially the main stars of it. Like, granted, that was back when, who's the main, the, the initial crop of Total Divas? It was Nikki, Bree, Naomi, Eva Marie, Jojo, was she on Total Divas? I think Natalia was there. All those other women. I think Alicia Fox is on Total Divas as well. Cameron, maybe, I don't know. So you have all these women who, they're on Total Divas in 2013. This is their opportunity. This is their spotlight. This is their big moment. These women who have done, by and large, nothing for the company in the past couple of years, they get on Total Divas. So you have their run, season one, season two. I watched episode two of Total Divas. I think it's crap. I can't watch it. So you get to 2014. And this is where I just can't stand the Bella Twins. Okay. The Bella Twins just absolutely tire on me to a point where I don't want to see them on my TV anymore. Honestly, the Bella Twins are just utterly dreadful. 2014, the Smart Busters, I'm not going to use the term to describe this, you know, the, the Bella Twins storyline that they used, because this, this is a PG channel there, Taz, but, oh my god. The terminology the, you know, the Smart Busters used to describe this was hilarious. Because this whole storyline that Nikki and Bree had a falling out about being sisters, and everything to do with this was just garbage. It was so bad. It was so bad. It was an it was atrocity. Literally in the build up to SummerSlam and you had what was it was a Brie versus Stephanie at SummerSlam? And then they had Nikki Turn Hill. I think that's what they did. And then the storylines and the storyline build they had where Brie bought a ticket. Remember that? Brie bought a ticket and she was screaming at Stephanie. And then Stephanie slapped her and then Stephanie got arrested because Brie bought a ticket. Brie bought a ticket, John. Uh, yeah, Michael Cole screaming, Brie bought a ticket! That was probably the worst Michael Cole voice ever, but anyway, and then JBL was shouting, and Jerry Lawler and all the Stooges were yelling that Brie bought a ticket. It was so bad. And then you go into the, you know, the storyline they had where they had a match at Night of Champions, I think. Did they? I don't know. And then this whole time, Nikki Bell is just the Divas Champion, because why wouldn't she be, I think? I don't, I don't remember when she was the Divas Champion. Point is, Nikki Bella and Brie Bella had that awful match at Hell in a Cell where Brie lost and became Nikki's assistant for a month, and from there, we got some of the absolute worst segments I've ever seen in pro wrestling. Genuinely, the Brie Bella, Nikki Bella smoothie segment is one of the segments which I look back upon and distinctly remember as being horrible. Literally, Nikki Bella, I remember this clear as day, Brie Bella is carrying Nikki Bella's luggage out of the arena during the show, taking it in the back, from the backstage area to Nikki Bella's car. Brie Bella picks up the luggage, puts it into the, you know, the back of the car, then Nikki Bella comes over and says, oh, well, I want to get a smoothie. And then it just ends up with Nikki Bella getting a smoothie anyway and pouring it all over Brie Bella. Just one of the worst segments I've ever seen. It wasn't even like a, an in-ring segment, just this backstage segment I remember being distinctively horrible. So that's my lasting memory of the Bella Twins. Nikki and Brie with the smoothie. Like, I remember these two women had a match at WrestleMania 31 and they lost to AJ and Paige. And then, like, what else did the Bella Twins even do? Like, Nikki held the Divas title for literally, like, nine months because they wanted to erase AJ Lee as champion. So they had Nikki hold the belt from, what, what the end of 2014 through 2015, uh, Night of Champions, until Charlotte beat her. And then, you, you know, you siphon through the women's revolution. You had Team PCB, Team Bellas, Team Bad, aka Team Black. Like, that's what it realistically was. That, that's what World Wrestling Entertainment did. They put all the people of color together. Anyway... So you had that in 2015, and then like, what even happened? Where were the Bella Twins in 2016? I don't remember. 2017, where were the Bella Twins? I don't know. I, don't, I remember in 2018, Nikki Bella had a match with you know Ronda Rousey at Evolution, and that was the last ever match. And that for some reason main event at Evolution. Why did Becky vs Charlotte in the last woman standing match for the Women's Championship not main event, but Nikki Bella vs Ronda Rousey did? I guess for Total Divas in the mainstream. I don't know. Anyway, so the Bella Twins are going into the Hall of Fame. This, it really makes me think about the legitimacy of the Hall of Fame. How legit, 
how credible is the WWE Hall of Fame? Because the Hall of Fame itself, I'll talk about the ceremony itself later on, but the Hall of Fame, like, I don't know. They choose who goes in it. It's who is on good terms politically with World Wrestling Entertainment. We saw this with Bruno San Martino. We saw this with the Ultimate Warrior. These two guys, for years, they were in the bad books of World Wrestling Entertainment. The World Wrestling Entertainment and these individuals wanted no nothing to do with each other. They had a falling out. Everything was a disaster. It was a mess. And then, you know, you know, bridges got built. Triple H, primarily in both cases, built the bridge back between World Wrestling Entertainment and the individual. So then these guys main evented the, you know, main evented, headlined the Hall of Fame class. Bruno San Martino, 2013. It was great to see Bruno again in the Hall of Fame before he passed away. Bruno, to think he held the World Wrestling Entertainment or Federation Championship for eight years is absurd. Anyway, Bruno San Martino, he got, got to go in. The Ultimate Warrior, his whole thing was super emotional. Everything that happened with him, he, he went in the Hall of Fame and then he passed away, like, you know, the, the, the night after he did the speech on, that was, that was just, that was terrible, that was so sad, but anyway, so yeah, I had that, the Ultimate Warrior, the bridge got built and then they went in, really just that whole political thing, that's all it is, the, the, the Hall of Fame is so political, like in other sports, your NBAs, your NFLs, all of these, it's very much like, you have to look at the resume, what they did, because you actually earn the resume in those sports, because sport isn't predetermined, maybe the XFL is, but NFL, NBA, all these sports aren't predetermined, so everything they earn puts them, you know, upper tier, upper tier, so that when the Hall of Fame every year looks at who should we induct, there's a list of, you know, people who are, you know, candidates who could be inducted, and then you look based on resume, look based on influence, look based on profile, and think, these guys going to the Hall of Fame. Whereas in the World Wrestling Entertainment Federation, whatever, you're looking at, realistically, who did the most, or who was booked the best, or in more optimal positions, because they were politically more in favour with us. So, the WWE the Hall of Fame, it's all political. That's all it is. And as far as the Hall of Fame itself, ever since, like, ever since I can remember, I never, was never really captivated by the Hall of Fame. Because, granted, if you're watching wrestling since the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, watching the Hall of Fame is great because you can really see all these people you grew up with being inducted, telling stories, really, like, it's very nostalgic, very touches close to home. Whereas someone like me who, I grew up watching wrestling in the PG era, which, the worst era to grow up watching wrestling, but I grew up watching wrestling in that era, so to see these people from 30 years ago go in the Hall of Fame, yes, it's cool, yes, I've gone back and watched all, the, you know, like a bunch of stuff from everyone to know exactly what they did for the business, the, every, all these individuals, but I can't relate to it as much, so I've never cared per se. And also along with that, the presentation of the Hall of Fame, I don't like it. I feel like how they did it in, two, in the mid-2000s, especially 2004 and five. Like it, when they did it back then, that was how the NBA did, you know, used to do it. And how they have that, the room with only wrestlers, very few fans like up the top tier, it's only wrestlers and it feels like a, a wrestler thing. Whereas when you're getting 14,000 seat arenas with fans filled, like it's just a mess. And don't even get me started on the fact that, you know, or when the fan attacked Bret Hart, that was disgusting. When that, that you know, scumbag ambushed an innocent, helpless Bret Hart in the Hall of Fame. Like, they've got to change the format for the Hall of Fame this year. They cannot go ahead with what they did last year, where they had the, the, the ring with, like, you know, the opening on one side. And so it's, like, three sides of a ring, and the wrestlers are sitting around, and they're doing the speeches, like, in the middle of where the ring would be. So the wrestler and whoever's inducting, or, you know, the person giving the speech for being inducted in the Hall of Fame, they have their back to one side of the crowd. So that allowed that scumbag to attack Brad, Bret Hart, which could have given him a heart attack. That guy could have had a gun, a knife. He could have been horrible. So, yeah, I mean, it was because that guy got absolutely beat up by the wrestlers and security guards. But anyway, I don't give that guy any more attention than he deserves. The guy who beat up Bret Hart at the Hall of Fame, just absolutely disgusting. But yeah, so the Hall of Fame, the whole setup, look, and approach of it needs to be changed. They've got to do something about it because how the Hall of Fame was you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, so much better than it is now. I don't know, like, the format they have is good, but I feel like getting, having an arena of 15,000 people is just so forced. It's such a cash grab. On a weekend where you're making enough money, you don't need the Hall of Fame to be in front of 15,000 fans. Have it be in front of 200 people, and they're all wrestlers who know these guys, okay? Don't have to force this into an event, then it's not, okay? Don't force it into a venue, it's not, 
okay? Make the Hall of Fame feel legit, credible, put people in it who really, really deserve it, okay? Like, what, the Celebrity Hall of Fame, that's another thing. Why was there a, ce why is there a celebrity wing in the Hall of Fame? It's, actually, well, I know why there is. It's, once again, it's more political BS. It's pretty much so that the World Wrestling Entertainment Company can market themselves into areas where they don't belong. So, for example, when they inducted Trump, they can get the you know, mainstream attention off that. When they induct Pete Rose, they can get the mainstream attention off that. When they induct Snoop Dogg, they can get the mainstream attention from the media, or like the, the music world. Which, I mean, whatever. I mean, it's just, stuff like this, it's so that when they induct inevitably for, you know, Tyson Fury into the Hall of Fame, yeah, they can try and get more clout off of the boxing world, but the boxing world doesn't care because if you're a boxing fan, you're not going to care about WWE. WWE, in terms of the boxing world, is fake crap. They wouldn't care. So, yeah, I mean, that's realistically the video. Just me talking really today about how the Hall of Fame for World Wrestling Entertainment is a joke. It really is. It's pretty much who is in political favour with the WWE, and in this case, it's the Bella Twins. Now, Bella Twins, I can see why they're going to the Hall of Fame. I know why. I see both sides. I can get. I fully get why people don't want to see them in the Hall of Fame. I fully get the people who support them going in the Hall of Fame. I don't really care. I'm not going to lose sleep over the, the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2020. I'm really not, but... I mean, anyway, that's the video. Be sure to like, comment, and sub. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Leave down below. What do you think of the Hall of Fame? Do you think it's a joke? Do you watch it every year? Do you enjoy it? Do you care? Do you not care? Who do you think should be in it? Who do you think shouldn't? Actually, hold on. No, no, no. I'm not finishing this video without talking about Owen Hart. Now, this whole Owen Hart thing and the Hall of Fame, it's just, it's just messy, isn't it? The stuff with... Owen and his wife, or, you know, or his, you know, what is, um, I forget the term, his widow, like, the whole thing with that, how, you know, Owen was taken from, you know, life, after having over the edge, and everything happened with that, and now he's not going to be in the Hall of Fame, because his wife doesn't want Owen's name mentioned by the company, which, I, look, I understand that, but let grudges slide, Bret Hart, who's Owen's, you know, blood, and most of the Hart family who are still around want badly for Bre um, Owen Hart to be in the Hall of Fame, okay? Putting Owen Hart in the Hall of Fame is honouring him. It's not denigrating him, it's not bringing him down, okay? There's nothing wrong with Owen Hart going to the Hall of Fame. Now, I get, this is the same company who killed him. But, okay, okay, no, I, I need to rephrase that. That's, that was false at all. This is the same company who Owen tragically lost his life working for on the job, okay, World Wrestling Entertainment didn't kill Owen Hart, okay, there was a, it was a, fl it was a freak, fluke accident, okay, what happened with Owen Hart was something that was horrible, it was awful, but it was, a, it was a fluke, okay, so it's not like the company deliberately killed Owen Hart, if that was the case, yes, but listen, it was a fluke accident, and the World Wrestling Entertainment company wants to honour Owen Hart by putting him in the Hall of Fame, so let them do that, okay, that is the best means of action, okay? It would be an honour and a celebration of your husband, okay? It wouldn't be a personal attack on Owen. Why would it be? Owen did so much of the business, okay? In the, in the 80s, the late 80s, and especially the early 90s, especially 1994, that storyline with Brad and Owen Hart was brilliant. That they strung it out over months and months, starting at the Survivor Series 93. The tension built till you get to the Royal Rumble where the turn happened. You get to WrestleMania 10, they have the match to open the show. It was amazing. Get to SummerSlam, they had the cage match. Like, for a year, near, near enough. It was amazing wrestling TV. And then the stuff Owen did, 95, 96, 97, 98, and then the bits of 99. Like, he fit in the Attitude Era. He was a part of the nation. He was all, in all these different storylines. Like, Owen Hart deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. And the fact that he's probably never going to be in the Hall of Fame because Owen's widow doesn't want Owen's name mentioned by the WWE... It's just disappointing, okay? World Wrestling Entertainment didn't deliberately go and kill Owen Hart. Why would they? Why would they do that? Okay, what happened with Owen was a fluke freak accident. That was not meant to happen. Never was. Over the edge 99, that was a complete accident. But now Owen's gone, as we all know. He's been gone for 21 years, near enough. And we just want his name honoured and mentioned by the WWE in their Hall of Fame. So, yeah, that's the video. I couldn't do this video without talking about Owen Hart. But yeah, realistically, just a holistic talk about the Hall of Fame, you know, how you know, illegitimate it is, the Bella Twins going in, and the Owen Hart thing. I just want to get that all into one video, so hopefully you enjoyed. Be sure to like, comment, and sub. 
Leave down below what you think of the Hall of Fame and all that. I'm going to get out of here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Who do you most looking forward to going to the 2020 Hall of Fame? I don't know. Leave it down below. See ya.